Good morning, y'all. Okay, I've been up since five. Y'all can do better than that. I have no shame. Some of you have seen me talk before. Um, so good morning. Thank you. Um, so the reason I called it Hustle and Flow is one, I just really like the movie called Hustle and Flow, and I just like how the wording works. Um, but the, the whole thing about making it has been on my mind a lot in, in prepping you know, for this talk, but also just conversations I have with people. And there's just been a lot of discussion about what making it is. And for those folks that may follow me on Twitter, I asked this yesterday and I asked on Facebook, what constitutes making it for you? And it was really depressing to see people majority, majority answer was making rent, having food, not even be able to do luxury things. It was like, I want a roof over my head and therefore I've made it. And so for the context of this talk though, I'm talking about your basic needs are met. You, you, know, you can go to work or whatever it is that you do, you can fulfill your passion. And this is when you are known, hyper visible, et cetera. People know who you are and what you do. And that's where I want to come in this at because people see folks that are visible or hyper visible. And by hyper visible, I mean the people have like 50, 60,000 Twitter followers. They've got the blue check. Um, and they're the people that you know, follow maybe 200 people back. And this isn't because they're terrible people. It's when you have that many people following you, you could never keep up with that many if you try to follow back everyone. So that's what I mean in terms of making it for this talk. Um, and again, trigger warnings, if I bring up things that have been said to me or other folks that I talk to for the, the latter part of this, there may be some slurs brought to you, unfortunately. Sorry to start your day that way. Um, so I want to start with the myth of overnight success. Because a lot of people will find someone on Twitter, they'll see them in a movie, you know, for, you know, John Boyega. How many people saw other things he was in before Star Wars? Yes, no. Um, but a lot of people saw him in Star Wars and thought, oh, he's this random actor. No one had ever seen him before, but he'd been acting for years before he got this break. And so people called him an overnight success. You know, any actor that you've never heard of, any celebrity you've never heard of, the minute you know they exist, then suddenly they're this overnight success. That is a lie. I'm going to tell you all this now. It is a lie. Someone has been working many, many years. They've been working very hard. And just because you found them doesn't mean they are suddenly, you know, sprung whole cloth. Uh, and this goes double when you are not a cis straight white dude. When you are not someone who is, you know, if you're, let's say you're out or you're brown like I am, um, if you're not, you know, size two, blonde, blue eyed, there's a lot more emphasis put on how did you really get here? How did you really make your way? And, you know, it doesn't mean that someone like me or anyone else in the audience, any of our other speakers haven't put in the work to get there. So for the brown folks in the room, you have heard this phrase growing up, correct? <laughs> See, I got, I got somebody in the back who's awake. Um, <laughs> but I heard this growing up. I have no shame. I will tell you, I'm in my 40s. I still hear this now to people that are half my age because it's true. I mean, we see a bunch of mediocre white folks that get a lot of credit for doing the bare minimum. And it is what it is. You see it every day on social media. You see it on Twitter. You see other places. Um, so when I, again, when I talk about making it, all these people that you see that are folks of color, that especially are black women, they have done so much work before they become household names to you or, because, or before you know who they are. So that's just one of those things where you have to think about if you're a person of privilege, and by privilege, I mean you are part of the quote unquote default that is assumed by society. This is not monetary privilege. This is not anything else other than you are, you are red as white, therefore you have a certain amount of privilege in this country and this world. So, oh, and my slide duplicated, sorry about that. So when I say you lose XP, because I'm a gamer, I'm a nerd, so I had to throw this in. Um, you lose XP, so assuming whatever your age is, that's your XP times whatever. And you have a negative damage modifier. And by damage modifier, I mean all the not so fun things that are told to you on Twitter and other places, or if you start talking, or if you have an opinion on the internet, because having an opinion on the internet is not fun these days if you are not a white dude. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. When you are a person of color, if you are out as an LGBTQIA person, if you are visible in any way that does not fit what people assume of you, and you dare say you have an opinion, 
you're going to get a lot of hate. I mean, this should not be news to anyone. If it is news to you, I suggest you spend way more time following people of color on Twitter and LGBT folks, because then you can see it and it won't be a surprise. This should never be a surprise to you. Um, you know, then you add in layers of racism and things like that, and, and a story that is, is going on now, and you know, I rehashed it with one of my friends, but I wrote a piece about a game that is coming out next week, and I talked about you know, black hair. And some people basically got as far as the title, or they saw that I wasn't real excited about this character, and you know, I've had all the racism, I've been called a nigger, I've been called everything else, I've been called you know, a fat bitch because my picture is on the internet. Or I've had people even doubt my ethnicity. Or, you know, where did you come from? How did you get to write this article? Because uh, I've been writing articles for years and people actually ask me that for my opinion and they pay me. That's how this happens. Um, look, I know it's a great mystery. I know people just are, are shocked when you get to actually write for pay. It happens. Um, but the other thing that happens is people try to delegitimize you and your work. They, they try to find every way that they can say that you're not real, you're fake, that you had to know someone, you had to worm your way to the top somehow versus recognizing that you have done this work. And that's one of the other ways in which making it, you know, when you are a person of color, it's much harder to do so. Um, so I wanted to talk about three folks that I, I met to, which I have the pleasure of knowing personally. Um, Mickey Kendall, who's actually gonna speak later today. Um, Brandon Stennis, also known as UGR Gaming, and Rain of April who I've never met, she's very lovely, consented to, to talk to me so I could have something for this talk. So um, Mickey, you may know from Solidarity for, for White Women, um, Diversify Agent Carter, but Mickey also does a great number of things. And you know, having known her for a long time, there is that, no disclaimer, I've known her, she's a real life person to me, unlike to people on the internet, which anyone who follows her, if you saw even her tweets this morning, there were people trying to argue with her about Black Panther and how comics were, were this, that, and the other, she has written comics. But you have people trying to explain comics back to her. Um, but this is the price of she's brown, and she's online, and this is what people like to do. Um, Brandon, who is a local streamer, he's partnered with Twitch. For those who don't know, Twitch is a streaming platform where you can share games, creativeness, whatever else you want to do. Um, he works for XSplit, which is a streaming software company and other places. He has hustled his ass off for five years to get where he is now, and yet you still have people that want to argue with him or tell him how things work or tell him how the software he actually works for works. Um, and then Rain of April, who everyone is, should know from Oscar So White. If you've seen that hashtag, she started it. Despite what people are trying to, to do and credit the Jada Pinkett Smiths, she started it. Um, but you know, she's a former attorney, she, she's an editor, she's a writer, but again, all three are people of color, all three are very well known, visible slash hyper visible, and you have this argument against them for, you know, existing. And a lot of what we talk about when we say making it, et cetera, came down to some questions that I asked them. And this may be where I talk at you a little more, but then I will have time for questions. Um, but I asked both Mickey and April, like, what's kind of the worst part of this in terms of making it and people not recognizing that you're a real live human being with feelings, you know, that has to sleep and eat on occasion. Um, and both of them like, said that people forget they're human, that they are, are a person, that they're not there to be an entertainment machine, that they are not there to answer tweet, tweets at three in the morning. I mean, literally, Mickey had someone expecting her to answer tweets at three in the morning our time in Chicago because they were angry about something she wrote. Um, and then there's the harassment. Um, both Mickey and April mentioned the harassment and that you know, trolls decide that they're fair game, that you are no longer a person, you are a persona. Or again, the whole part of where did you come from? I just now saw you today on Twitter, so I have decided that you are a non-entity and that you know, I'm new, so I'm gonna take this out on you. I'm not gonna acknowledge the fact that you've done this work to have this following, to have this presence. Um, and Brandon, because he is, he's out, he's um, a queer black man, I asked him the same thing. And he said, mostly for him, a lot of people don't do that to him, but once they do find out he's queer, there, there are things that come up, I've been in his streams, where folks call him names, they use monkey emotes, they call him, you know, pick any slur you want between race and queerness. Um, 
And these are the things that you have to deal with, because again, we don't talk about the work that's there. And that, that's what I kind of want to get into before we have time for questions, is people are out here doing the work. And a lot of times you, you don't see someone, or you may find them because of a Twitter feed, or a movie, or a book, or whatever. Um, and that's where we have to work twice as hard, and sometimes three times as hard. Because you know I, I have been around for a while, and yet I still find people that don't realize that I started I Need Diverse Games, which is what I do. I live here. I run a nonprofit. Or I get people who will send me articles back that I've written. <laughs> Seriously, I have had people send me articles. Did you read this? And I'm like, yep, sure did. <laughs> and I'm like, did you look at the byline? And they go, oh. OK. It, it, now it's just funny. I, I get a good laugh out of it when it happens, because I'm just like, OK. That, that just shows me you didn't actually read it. Um, they're very effusive about the article. I'm just like, just, just next time, please read it. Or they'll send it to the I Need Diverse Games account, as if no one there tweeted it and read it. Um, and one, thing, one of the other things that Mickey and I talked about, as well as the others, is advice. And that's what I want to kind of leave you with before we, we have time for questions. Because I know I talk quickly. I always get nervous when I do public speaking, no matter how many times I do it. So if anyone thinks you don't get nervous when you do public speaking, that is a lie. Um, but what we talked about was advice. Because you know anyone in this room, I don't know everybody. You could be very well known on Twitter, on other spaces. Or you could be someone who's just kind of becoming well known or becoming known for whatever it is that you do. And you know. I wish I had had some advice for dealing with this when you get people that doubt your authenticity. I almost said doubt your ethnicity. That's happened to me too. Um, what is it that you do when someone has decided that your work is not enough, that your body of work is unknown to them, so therefore it doesn't exist, it doesn't matter? Um, Brandon UGR had a lot of good advice. And he was like, remind people you don't need their validation. For this person that is going to come at you, be it on social media, where have you, in person, if it happens in person, that's a whole other thing that we should talk about later, um, is remind people that you don't need them to validate who you are. Because if people are paying attention to what you have to say, clearly you have a message. Someone somewhere is paying you to write an article, they care about your opinion. And that person who's mad about it, they're just mad because they haven't done the work. Um, and Brandon especially, he had a very hard lesson. He literally lost everything a few years ago. And you know, had got kind of full of himself, in his own words. And then realized that being humble and being grateful for, the, for what you do have is a lot more useful than getting really full of yourself and thinking that no one can touch you. Because that is the fastest way to have your own downfall. Um, sorry. Speaker notes, which is not what I wanted. Um, Sorry. I am not a Mac person, and I'm so used to a touchpad that I have uh, I've screwed this up. Sorry, y'all. There we go. So getting back to my point, sorry. I'm a technology fail, even though I've got a CS degree. Um, is, is thinking about you know those people that want to come at you and, and act as if you don't belong. You do. Clearly, you do. If someone's, if you've got 20,000 followers on Twitter, provided you did not buy them, then maybe there's a lot of people who want to listen to what you have to say. You know, in my case, there's 8,600 people, for some reason, who follow me and listen to what I have to say. I don't always know why. Some days, I think they just want, want to argue, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but that's the kind of advice I would have for you. And one last thing to think about is the model minority myth is that a lot of people, especially people of color, if you're out, if you have an intersectional identity and you are out and about on, on the internet or in person, is that we're held up as model minorities. We're held up as the good one. Don't do that to people. Because I will tell you personally, I'm not that person to be, to be held up as your friend, your one black friend on the internet. Um, but think about what it is that you're doing when you go and try to invalidate someone, when you go and try to talk about they don't belong. So the very long-winded kind of coming back to, to full circle is when it comes to making it, everyone has paid their dues. There is no overnight success. There is no model minority. If you see someone for the first time on Twitter and they've got 50,000 followers, they're probably not new. 
Um, they're probably someone who you just never met before, you never saw their work before. So remember that as you go out and interact in the world. There's my contact info, I'm local for any other local folks who wanna interact. And we have about four minutes for questions. And I don't bite, I will be nice to you if you ask me a question. Um, so the question was, if this happens in a real life scenario, if I find someone trying to frame me as that model minority, like kind of how do I mitigate that? How do I reframe their expectation of what they want? Um, in real life, I should say in interpersonal in meat space interactions, I will, ask, I will ask them to clarify what it is they're actually trying to ask me. Because um, I'll ask them, it's like, well, do you, don't you know other people who do X, Y, Z? So in my case, there are a lot of black people who game. I'm not the only one. Because um, Twitch just did a thing where they called it Twitch Unity. And there were no black women profiled at all. And so there was a thing that happened on Twitter and, and other things where a lot of us were like, um, hello, I'm here. You know, I do this, not for a living in my case, but, you know, I, I try to reframe it and ask them, what is it you're looking for out of me? And you know, do you, am I the only black person you know that does this? Am I the only person who talks about diversity or, or, or am I the person that you finally met in person, which really is poorly phrased, um, but am I the first person you've had a chance to interact with? So now you're gonna get all these questions out that you wouldn't ask on Twitter. And sometimes I like to make them a little uncomfortable because it's emotional labor. If you're going to come to me in person and ask for emotional labor, I'm going to make you work for it. Um, and, if, and if they can't really give me a good reason or to say, you know what, think about your question. I give them that email address, not my usual one, and say, think about it. And if you can actually come up with a question, then you can email me. And I moderate panels this way as well because we do get those kind of questions at panels where the person has, they're trying to like, manipulate and, and maneuver around to a really weird, awkward question. And I'm just like, A, have a question, but B, figure out what it is you're trying to really ask. Because you know, if I have to read behind, between the lines, you're asking for a lot of me, you're asking for emotional labor, or I'll just flat out line, be like, you know what, I've got an appointment, I gotta go, bye. <laughs> okay, so the question was, um, basically I'm, I'm active in many communities, and is there a way in which they treat harassment? So Twitter, seems to benefit and profit off harassment because look, look, I'm sure when Mickey gives her talk, you will see more about this because she has talked about this at length. Um, but look at how long it takes them to get rid of someone who harasses folks. You know, Milo, whatever his name is. Um, it took him harassing a celebrity after years and years for them to finally bounce him. Um, Twitch tries. They've actually got some moderation tools now. They encourage you to have moderate, moderators in your stream. So if I'm playing a game, if I'm doing something, so for instance, um, I play Mafia 3, which is by 2K and Hangar 13. It features a black protagonist. You can imagine what I got when I streamed that game. Um, but thanks to moderation tools, both in-house and third party, we can work on it. And they are actually taking it seriously. Um, Facebook basically is like, why did you follow that person? And I'm like, I didn't follow that person. They came to me. But at least with Facebook, I will give them this, when you block someone, it is like they just don't exist. They can't find you, they can't see anything you post. I wish Twitter did that as well, because people can still tag me into conversations with someone I've blocked if other people are involved. Um, so Twitter, they just need to get themselves together because they literally profit off harassment and they're not doing a lot to make it any better. And sometimes if I did not have to interact on Twitter for the work that I do, because that's where most of my networking happens, I would leave that platform in a hot second because it is not worth it. It is not worth waking up to, to all the not fun things that I've been called, even just today, over a three week old article. Um, Twitch, again, they're, they're working on it. They are listening to people, it seems like. I'm trying to think of other platforms. I don't use Quora because I think it's a cesspit. Um, <laughs> And every time I get a notification on Quora, I'm just like, why? Why did you follow me? I, I'm never here. Um, Google Plus, people still use it, some folks. I just kind of cross post and forget it exists. And then WordPress, I've got all the plugins to manage my comments. Um, so if anyone here has a blog, if you're running on WordPress, get as commit, get, get all the things that can manage your comments. And I recently had a friend help me manage my Facebook page. So if anyone does have a Facebook page, if you have anything else, Get someone you trust to help manage it. Um, and that's for anyone who has like a big Twitter following in the room. If you can, get someone to help manage your feed. 
because the last thing you need to do is get up and see somebody yelling at you because you didn't answer them like six hours ago when you were actually sleeping. So, I see you, Ash. <laughs> I see you through this question. Uh, so, Ash's question is, how do I do self-care? So, what I do is, you know, and this is not my get off the internet because they're trolls. This is my, I go outside, you know, like I call up friends. I'm like, hey, let's go get some tea. Let's go go to the movies. Let's do something that does not involve this thing that is currently stressing me out. The other self-care is, again, having someone I trust manage my social media. Um, and it's mostly right now my Facebook page because everything else is two-factor authenticated. Um, I do something fun for me. I do something that has nothing to do with my work. I do something that... Um, is just for me. So I stream on Twitch a lot. I will play a game and not stream it. Or I'll play something silly, like there's a game where you are literally a cat and you just knock stuff off. It is the most relaxed, it is the most relaxing thing. It is like literally you were just, all you see is little cat paws, you just knock stuff down. And doing that for 20 minutes made me so happy. Um, I hang out with my cat, because my cat's like, hey, you're home, you should actually pay attention to me. Um, or I know this sounds weird, but sometimes cleaning is very therapeutic. Because um, when you get cluttered, it, it messes with your head. And, you know, one room at a time. I just clean up, I feel better. And then I go out and I go get a glass of wine for those that do drink, if that's your thing. I, or I treat myself to expensive whiskey. Because you know what? I've worked hard. This is my one thing to do. I don't normally go home and blow, blow that kind of money on alcohol or whatever it is I'm going to go do. Or I buy a game. But it's a game I want. It's not a game I feel I have to play for work. Um, so yeah, that is what I do for self-care. I, I kind of get away from the stress, and when I feel I'm emotionally ready, I come back to it. All right, well, I guess if no one else has questions, there's my contact info, and I will be around all day. Thank you. <laughs>